Pipe threads are manufactured in many forms, but the most common types are straight and tapered threads. Straight pipe threads are gauged with the go and no-go process, like standard threads. But tapered pipe threads require an entirely different gauging method, a series of one to three L-checks. In this video, we'll cover how to gauge the three types of American tapered pipe threads, NPT, which stands for National Pipe Taper, and NPTF, which stands for National Pipe Taper Fuel and comes in class one and class two classifications. When assembled tightly, NPT threads leave voids at the root and crest of the threads, which need to be filled with a sealing compound at assembly to avoid spiral leakage. NPTF is also known as American Dry Seal Pipe Thread and is designed to leave no voids and therefore requires no sealant. For all three types of tapered thread, the L1 gauge is the first check required. This gauge checks the hand tight engagement lengths, which typically includes the first four to five threads. For internal threads, the L1 gauge will be a plug gauge with a notch ground into the side for a reference surface. For external threads, the L1 gauge will be a ring gauge where the flat surface of the gauge acts as a reference. The labeled side of the gauge faces the end of the thread. The part surface where the pipe thread starts is used as the reference for all measurements. Each type of tapered thread requires a different use of the L1 gauge. For NPT threads, there's only one test required. Thread the L1 gauge onto or into the tapered thread until the fit is hand tight. When the gauge stops, the notch on the plug gauge or the flat learn gauge should be within plus or minus one turn from the entry face of the thread. NPTF class one threads require the same check with one major difference. You need to know the distance from the face of the thread to the reference notch in the plug gauge or the surface of the ring gauge to complete the next check in the series. In our example, the L1 gauge is one half turn below the thread surface, which is 0 0.036 inches when measured. NPTF class two threads require a third step. You must determine if the thread is at the minimum, basic, or maximum condition. To do this is slightly different for internal threads versus external threads. For external threads, if the surface of the L1 ring gauge is within one third of a turn above or below the thread surface, then the thread is in the basic condition. If the surface of the L1 ring gauge is more than a third of a turn above the thread surface, then the thread is in the maximum condition. If the surface of the L1 gauge is more than a third of a turn lower than the thread face, then the thread is in the minimum condition. For internal threads, the conditions are reversed. If the notch on the L1 plug gauge is above the threaded face more than one third of a turn, then the thread is in the minimum condition. If the notch is more than a third turn below the threaded surface, then the thread is in the maximum condition. In our example, the L1 gauge is one half turn below the thread surface, which puts it in the minimum condition. Both classes of NPTF threads require the use of an L2 gauge for external threads or an L3 gauge for internal threads. The L2 and L3 gauges check the wrench tight engagement length, which generally check the fifth, sixth, and seventh threads. These gauges look similar to their L1 gauge counterparts, but they're designed to verify the taper of the thread. The L2 and L3 gauges are used in similar manners to the L1 gauge. Thread the gauge into or onto the thread until the fit is hand tight. To pass this test, the surface of the L3 gauge or the notch of the L2 gauge must be within plus or minus one half turn of the L1 position. This is the final check needed for NPTF class one threads. In our example, the L2 gauge lies within the pass region that was determined by the position of the L1 gauge. NPTF class two threads require the third gauge in the series, the six step gauge, also known as the crest and root truncation gauge or the crest gauge. This gauge is not threaded, but is a tapered plane gauge with six steps ground into it. This gauge is simply inserted into the hole or over the external threads without turning as there are no threads. The six steps are labeled in three pairs, giving a high and low limit for each of the three conditions to be determined with the L1 gauge, minimum, basic, or maximum. If the thread is in the maximum condition, then the face of the thread should fall between the two steps labeled MX and MXT. If the thread is in the basic condition, 
the face of the thread should fall between the two steps labeled B and BT. Finally, if the thread is in the minimum condition, the face of the thread should fall between the two steps labeled MN and MNT. In our example, we determined that the thread was in the minimum condition in our L1 check. And you can see the thread surface lies between the MN and the MNT steps of the six step gauge and has passed the test. If you still have questions about gauging your pipe threads, contact one of New Vista's application engineers today for expert assistance and to see how much time and money New Vista systems can save you.